Hello from a pretty snowy Greece, Athens, Greece. I'm Yanis Russos from the Get Database Group, and I'd like to take you through what we are planning to achieve in GitLab 13.10, which is scheduled to be released on March 22nd. Our plan for 13.10 is to focus our efforts on the automated database migration testing and the primary key overflow risk for tables with an integer primary key. Those are the same epics that we were focusing on 13.9, and we are going to keep our focus for the next milestone uh, the same. So, uh, addressing primary key overflow risk, a very quick overview. You can check past kickoff videos and our epics and issues for more details. Integer four, uh, eight are four byte integers. They have a maximum value of 2.15 billion uh, uh, numbers that they can uh, uh, describe. So in GitLab, all tables, um, almost up to two years ago, use integer four uh, integers as primary keys. And we have started to, uh, observing some tables, some of those tables uh, going above one billion records. So as you can see here, for, by checking the capacity used as a percentage. Why uh, that's important for us to monitor and why do we want to address that? If we reach the maximum integer value, that's a catastrophic event. We, we won't be able to add any more records on those tables. So we want to address those problems as early as possible. When I'm discussing this, it's not like this is a problem that we're going to have next week. This is uh, the trend uh, for the past month. We can see that uh, they go up, but it's, uh, they are not going up at a uh, crazy rate. But because this, is, this can lead uh, to a catastrophic event, we want to address it as early as possible. The second part there is that when we are discussing converting uh, the tables, converting the primary keys, this is not about only the primary keys. This is also about all the foreign keys that reference those primary keys. And that means, for example, in the CI builds that we have to convert CI builds, update 1 million records, but we also have to update 16 additional tables that reference that table, the CI builds table. So in reality, converting the CI builds table means updating 17 tables, each one with more or less a billion records. So we already have the migration helpers, the tooling necessary to do that. But what we are trying to address right now is the infrastructure, our framework for running background migrations. So at the gitlab.com scale, whenever we're discussing for such a table, those are terabyte tables, more or less. So the only way to approach uh, those updates is to batch, let's say 1000 records at a time, and split uh, the, um, those updates into 1,000 or 10,000 record uh, batches and have a separate job make the update for each batch. So what we are doing right now is that, um, in general, we have this framework. We are splitting, uh, uh, generating the batches, creating background jobs, and uh, schedule them and let our queuing and, um, and scheduling framework uh, dequeue them and run them. What's the problem? When you have a billion records, even if you uh, um, have each job running 10,000, uh, updating 10,000 records at a time, you will need something like 100,000 jobs. That's a lot of jobs that have to be scheduled and wait in the queue and then processed uh, uh, one at a time. So what we really want to do here is to improve how our make background migration mechanisms work. So we want to allow migration to be configurable. We want to have a new way of scheduling migrations that will not require a hundred thousand uh, jobs to be scheduled beforehand and the batch is pre-computed. And more importantly, we want to find a way so that we dynamically define the batch size. Because one more very difficult problem there is that you start and depending on hardware, you may think that uh, the best batch size um, to, to work on is 10,000 uh, records. You may find that you could run 30,000 uh, records at a time and it will be okay. You don't want to lose uh, the, the difference. Or you may find out that 10,000 records at a time is too much and could bring a, a production system down. So you have to very quickly go down to 1,000 at a time. So we want to make those uh, migrations configurable 
dynamic so that we can change uh, migrations, uh, the bat sizes on the fly. And more importantly, we also want to make those parallelizable. That means that why wait for the jobs to run one after the other when you update, for example, primary keys, while you can uh, update 10 different uh, chunks of that table uh, in parallel, as those do not affect each other. A second thing is that we also want to make everything that we're working on is in order to make online updates. If we could take all, all gitlab.com offline, things will be very simpler, but we are focusing, we are always focusing on online updates. You can find more details in our uh, uh, epics and this specific issue. So uh, a couple of additional things we want to work on. We also want to add an issue that uh, for forecasting the integer for overflow date for all relevant tables. So what we want to do is to have auto an automated way and repeatable way to get something like this. This is a very simplistic forecast that, for example, says that maybe by December 2021, we will reach the limit for CI builds. We want to have this uh, using our current gro growth and uh, automated and uh, repeatable in GitLab.com for all tables so that we are sure that we can mo we, we monitor and we know exactly how things go. And the final issue that we want to, we plan to address during uh, 30.10 is to, for better or worse, create also an emergency plan because our plan is to address everything uh, beforehand, never reach the limit, but let's say that something happens and we reach the limit, how can we address it? And there are some, uh, we have to research uh, approaches that range from uh, using negative primary keys to using table inheritance, which in our case, is not very uh, useful uh, to um, uh, infrastructure solutions, like uh, uh, if we can uh, set up a second cluster and use logical replication and use logical replication for the updates and more uh, things that we want to research and figure out. Those are contingency plans but we have to have those. It's better prepared, better safe than sorry. So that's on the primary key conversion. The second uh, um, epic that we are focusing on are the, is the automatic database migration testing. This is our top internal feature priority. We are moving uh, very fast. We have moved at the pace we have planned in 30.9, and we already have an initial MVC available. And we have a plan to extend using it by all database maintainers by the start of 30.10. So let me show you, so for example, uh, what's our current state before we start working on 30.10. You can already see this is working on GitLab, uh, GitLab org slash GitLab in the GitLab uh, project. And we can see that for all migrations that are included in a maze request, we can check how much time they took to, to run. If they run successfully and also what was the database size change so for example here this is a, a big uh, migration that dropped um, the audit events uh, table the old audit events table it took some time to run because dropping such a large table takes time but we can also see the effect to, to our database size that we, we want something we gain something like uh, 160 gigabytes or here you can see an index added in another table that uh, took 15 seconds and uh, added 70 megabytes. And this is the, the, the case where everything works as expected. We also have the case where every, something is not working. So we can see here, and this is a real exp uh, world example, where we figured out, we found out that adding a specific index was breaking things. You can see here that we get a uh, feedback that it's not working and we understood and a database maintainer like myself can go, this is behind the scenes what runs. And if I check the DB migrations uh, job, I can see that, for example, when we try to add this index, uh, we uh, were getting a statement timeout. So for example, those 15 seconds is the statement timeout in a, a GitLab, um, GitLab's production. And we had issues and we had to, uh, uh, iterate and add a, a covering index in order to, um, to solve that problem. Uh, and we're very, very optimistic on, on new cases about uh, how we are going to use it. We're going to iterate uh, very fast. We want to also add uh, some summaries with all the queries that were executed 
So, for example, here we have by migration, but we want to also get some summaries. Those were the queries. That's how much time its query took. That's the average time. That's the total time because you executed that query 10,000 times. Those are our uh, plan for 13.10, together with uh, extensive testing and iteration using internal uh, team and all the database um, uh, maintainers uh, so that we can iterate and improve and then start adding more features like, for example, background migration testing and more. Finally, one last thing that uh, I want to mention for 30.10 is that uh, um, in order uh, to prepare for a switching to Postgres 12 uh, as the default, as the minimum required version, we want to also explicitly mark all the CTS with materialize. What happens there? So um, starting on Postgres 12, uh, the CTEs, the CTEs are the with clauses in uh, SQL, where you say with something and then you use it. Everything until po uh, Postgres 11, those CTEs were materialized. What does that mean? Uh, Postgres will create a, a temporary table and then use it in the rest of the queries. Uh, that was not, uh, this, that's not always uh, optimal, but that can also be used as an optimization fence in order to force uh, Postgres to, to create the correct um, uh, optimization plans, uh, query plans. So we were using this like that in, um, in GitLab. So this is very important. For example, if you want to pre-compute something and then use it in order to run updates or inserts, you want to pre-compute it and then use it. But starting Postgres 12, in some cases, Postgres will, will inline those CTEs. That can have amazing effects in most, uh, some cases, but in some other cases can break query plans. So we want to mark all CTEs with a materialize so that uh, we keep our current um, uh, behavior and then we can iterate and add some of those to be run in line as we go forward. So that's it. You can check more uh, uh, issues in, um, in our uh, EPIC. Uh, thank you so much for watching and talk to you uh, next month.